the kingdom of my divine will in the midst of creatures book of heaven volume 33 part 9 october 7 1934 reciprocal love between god and the creature exchange of action labyrinth of love in which one who lives in the divine fiat is placed god the sower in the field of souls i am under the eternal waves of the divine fiat and my poor mind feels its sweet enchantment its power and operative virtue which investing me makes me do what it does it seems to me that with its eye of light it gives life and gives rise to everything and with its empire it rules over everything it keeps everything into account not a single breath escapes it it gives everything and wants everything but with such love as to seem incredible and what is most stupefying is that it wants the creature to know what it does so as to have her inseparable with itself and let her do what the divine will itself does i remained enchanted and my littleness felt lost if it wasn't for jesus who stirred me by making me his little visit i would have remained there who knows for how long then all goodness and love he told me my good daughter do not be surprised everything is possible for one who lives in my will there is reciprocal love from both sides god and the creature but so great that the human littleness reaches the point of making the acts of god her own and as her own she loves them so much that she would lay down her life in order to defend love and give all the glory the first place of honor to one alone of these divine acts god in exchange makes the acts of the creature his own he finds his very self in these acts the display of his love the height of his sanctity and oh how he loves them and in this reciprocal love they love each other so much as to remain imprisoned one within the other but a voluntary imprisonment such that while it renders them inseparable they feel happy that god feels loved and finds his place inside the creature and she feels loved by god and holds her place within the supreme being there is no greater happiness for the creature than to be able to say and be certain of it that she is loved by god and there is no greater happiness for us than to be loved by the one who was created by us and only to love us and to fulfill our will now while the creature is found within her creator she would want everyone to love him to recognize him and by virtue of the divine fiat by which she is animated she wants to give rise and recall all the acts of creatures within god so as to be able to say to him i give you everything and i love you for all hence together with the divine volition she makes herself thought for each intelligence gaze for each eye word for each voice heartbeat for each heart motion for each work step for each foot 
What does one who lives in my will not want to give me? Everything and everyone. And therefore she says to my will, I feel the need to possess your love, your power, to be able to have a love that says to you, I love you for all. So our will lets us find in her the love and the requital of all the acts of creatures. Oh, my will, what power you cast the soul into, and into what a labyrinth of love, the one who lives in you. It is such and so great that the human littleness feels drowned with love, and as a refreshment, she feels the need to trace everyone, to speak her continuous refrain, I love you, I love you, as the outpouring of the great love that my divine will gives her. This is life of ours, all of love, our history woven ab eterno. There's a footnote here for ab eterno, meaning from eternity. Back to the beginning of the sentence. This is life of ours, all of love, our history woven ab eterno, from eternity, all of love. And so, must be one who lives in our will. There is to be such a cord between her and us as to form one single act and one single love. Now, my blessed daughter, I want to let you know how we love the creatures and our continuous outpourings of love that we pour upon them. Our first act of our happiness is love, and to give love. If we do not give love, we lack the breath, the motion, and the nourishment for our Supreme Being. If we do not give love, and it is by deeds that we love, we would stop the course of our divine life which cannot be. Here is why our devices, our industriousness, our stratagems of love are innumerable, and a love not only by words, but by deeds, and operating works without ever ceasing. Now, just as in creation, we created a sun which with its operating light and heat gives light to all, transforms the face of the earth, and keeps sowing in each plant, color in some, fragrance in others, sweetness in some. There is nothing into which the sun does not cast its effect, almost like seed of maturation, so as to render all plants apt to nourishing man, and giving him pleasure with many tastes, almost innumerable. In the same way, our Supreme Being, reserving for himself the noblest part of man, which is the soul, more than sun, we are fixed upon her interior. There is a footnote here for the word we, we is referring to our Supreme Being. More than sun, we, our Supreme Being, are fixed upon her interior. We dart through it, we mold it, and as we touch it, more than solar light, we cast the seed of the thought into the intellect, the seed of the remembrance of us, into her memory, the seed of our will into hers, the seed of the word into her voice, the seed of the motion into her works, 
the seed of our love into her heart, and so with all the rest. Now, if man is attentive to us, working the field of his soul together with us, as we never withdraw our divine son, day and night, more than tender mother, we remain upon him, now nourishing him, now warming him, now defending him, now working together, and covering him and hiding him in our love. We will then make a beautiful harvest, which will serve him to feed himself of us, and sing the praises of our love, of our power, and infinite wisdom. While, if he is not attentive to us, our divine seed remains suffocated, without producing the good it possesses. Man remains on an empty stomach, without the divine nourishments, and we remain empty of his love. How painful it is to sow without reaping. But in spite of this, our love is so great that we do not give up. We continue to dart through him, to warm him, almost like a sun that never tires of spreading its coat of light, even if it finds no plants or flowers in which to cast the seed of its effects. Oh, how much more good the sun could do if it did not find so many sterile lands, stony and abandoned by man. The same for us. If we found more souls who would pay attention to us, we would give so many goods as to transform the creatures into living saints and faithful copies of us. But in our divine will, there is no danger that man would not receive our daily sowing, or that he would not work together with his Creator in the field of his soul. Therefore, always in my fiat do I want you, nor should you give a thought to anything else. In this way, we shall make a beautiful harvest, and you and I will have abundant nourishments, such as to be able to provide for others, and we will be happy of one single happiness. Fiat. October 21st, 1934, How the Characteristic and Property of the Divine Will is Spontaneity. How all that is beautiful holy and great, is contained in it. I am always on the way in the divine fiat. My little intelligence never stays still. It runs and runs always, so that I may be present, as much as it is possible for me, together with the race of the incessant acts that the divine will does for love of creatures. To think that it loves me always, nor does it ever cease loving me, and I am not running within its love to love it back? No, I can't. I feel I would do wrong to it. Instead, I feel I am inside the maze of its love, and without any effort, I love it, and I want to investigate its love to see how much more it loves me. And I remain surprised in seeing its immense seas of love. And then my love, just tiny little drops. And what's more, drawn by its own love. So I am better off remaining inside its own sea, saying to it, Your love is mine. Therefore, let us love each other with one single love. In this way, I calm down, and the divine volition is content. It is necessary to take of its own, to be daring, 
Otherwise, one remains without giving anything, with a love so small that it dies on one's lips. But while my mind was pouring out nonsense, my sweet Jesus, my dear life, making his short little visit, in a way that it seemed he took delight in listening to me, told me, My little daughter, the love, the acts, the sacrifices that are spontaneous, with no strain done by the creature for me, are so pleasing to me that in order to enjoy them more, I enclose them inside my heart. And my contentment is so great that I keep repeating, How beautiful they are! How sweet is her love! On them I find my divine way, my spontaneous pains, my love that loves constantly, with no one forcing me or begging me to. You must know that one of the most beautiful characteristics that my divine will possesses by nature, as its legitimate property and virtue, is spontaneity. Everything is spontaneous in it. If it loves, if it operates, if with one single act it gives life and preserves everything, it makes no effort nor does it let itself be begged by anyone. Its motto is, I want, hence I do. In fact, an effort implies a necessity, while we have no need of anything or of anyone. Effort implies lack of power, while we are powerful by nature and all hang upon our power. In one instant, we can do anything, and in another instant, if we want to, we can destroy everything. Effort says lack of love, while our love is such and so great as to seem incredible. Hence, we created everything without anyone asking us or saying anything to us. And in the very redemption, there was no law over me. No one could force me to suffer so much, even unto death. But my law was love, and the operative virtue of my divine spontaneity. So much so that the pains were formed in me first. I gave them life. And then, investing the creatures, they would give them back to me. And I, with that same spontaneous love with which I had given them life, so I received them. No one could touch me had I not wanted it so. So, all that is beautiful, good, holy, great, is in the operating in spontaneous ways. On the other hand, one who operates and loves in a forced way loses what is best, and his works and love can be called, and indeed are, lifeless. And as a consequence, they are subject to mutability, while spontaneity produces firmness and good. Now, my daughter, the sign that the soul lives in my divine will is her loving, operating, and also suffering spontaneously. Strain does not exist. My will that keeps her with itself communicates to her its own spontaneity so as to have her with itself, within its love that runs, inside its works that never cease. Otherwise, 
it would be a bother for it to keep her inside its womb of light without the characteristic of its spontaneous way. Even more, the creature is all eyes to look at my divine fiat, as she does not want to be left behind, but wants to run together with it, to love with its love, and to be present inside its works, in order to requite it, and sing the praises of its power and creative magnificence. Therefore, run, run always, and let your soul, with no effort, plunge itself into my divine volition, so as to go through its ways together with it, loving ways, and filled with stratagems for love of creatures. Fiat November 5th, 1934 True love in the creature forms its own little place inside the divine works to be able to enclose the life of the divine will. I feel an irresistible force that never lets me stay still, and it seems that each created thing and all that my sweet Jesus has done and suffered says to me, I have created this for you, for love of you. And you? Don't you want to put anything of your own for love of me in what I have done for you? I have cried for you. I have suffered. I have died for you. And what about you? Don't you want to put something inside my tears, into my pains, in my death? The whole of my being seeks you. And you? Don't you want to invest and search all of my things in order to envelop them and enclose them inside your I love you? I am all love for you. And you, don't you want to be all love for me? I remained confounded, and my poor mind starts off the race of the acts done by the divine will, so as to be able to say, I too have put something of my own into your acts, be it even a little I love you of mine. But in that I love you, I place the whole of myself. But while I was doing my race, my sweet Jesus, surprising me with his short little visit, all goodness told me, my blessed daughter, you must know that true love in the creature puts me in the condition of forgetting everything and of disposing myself to concede that my will come to reign upon earth. Not that I suffer forgetfulness. This cannot be in me. It would be a flaw. But rather, I take such delight in the true love of the creature when I find that all the particles of her being tell me that they love me, and pouring out this love for me, she invests me and runs through my whole being in my works, and as though needing herself with me, she makes me feel her love everywhere and in every place. And I, to enjoy this love of the creature, I put everything aside, and as though forgetting about it, she inclines me so much as to dispose me and impose herself over me, to give her surprising things and whatever she wants, and even the kingdom of my will. True love holds such power as to call my will as life into the human being. You must know that when I stretched out the heavens and created the sun, even then in my all-seeingness, 
I saw your love running through the heavens, investing the light of the sun, and forming in all created things a little place for you to love me. And oh, how I rejoiced, and from that time my will ran toward you and those who would love me, so as to give of itself as life within that tiny little place of love. See then how my will covered all centuries. It gathered them into one single point, all of them in act. And I found the place of love in which to put its life, so as to continue it with all of its divine majesty and decorum. Then I came upon earth. But do you know where I found the little place in which to enclose my life? In the true love of the creature. From that time, I already saw your love, which surrounding me like a crown, invested my whole humanity and flowed within my blood through each little particle of me, almost being kneaded with me. Everything was in act for me, and as though present, and my tears found the little place in which to pour themselves. My love, my pains, my life, the refuge in which to remain safe, and my death found even the resurrection within the true love of the creature. And my divine will found its kingdom in which to reign. Therefore, if you want my divine will to come and reign as life in the creatures, let me find your love everywhere, in every place, and inside each thing. Let me feel it always. With it, you will form the stake on which to burn everything, such that, consuming all that is not my will, it will form the place in which my will can be enclosed. Then shall all my works find a receptacle, their hiding place from which to be able to continue the good and the operating virtue they possess. And so, on both sides, we shall exchange places. You will find your little place in me and in all of my works, and I will find it in you and in all your acts. Therefore, always forward in my divine will to form the stake of love on which you will burn as well as all the impediments that prevent its reigning in the midst of creatures fiat you have reached the end of the book of heaven volume 33 part 9 fiat